Hello, I wanted to bring you a message today. One that I've been um, holding on to for quite a few weeks and I just feel like today I need to release this message. And so the message comes from Malachi chapter 4 verse 1 to 3. Behold, the day is coming burning like an oven when all ignorant, all evildoers will be stubble. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings, and you shall go out like, leap, like leaping like calves from the stall. And you, you shall tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord of hosts. And the reason why I believe that we've gotten to this place is because the Lord is longing to place healing on a nation, on our nations, and each nation is actually individual people. Uh, in Malachi, in, his name means messenger. It's carried, that, that book, Malachi, has carried a profound message. He lived in a time when the Jews had just come, come out of exile and were returning from Babylon. And during the same time of Nehemiah, the one who had a mandate from God to rebuild the walls, a prophet whose message was simple. Be faithful in God's covenant, a voice that took a stand against the thoughtless and false-hearted worship. He took a stand in a moment in time where idols were being worshiped and divorce was running rampant. And if that was not enough, the people were stealing from God, denying their tithes and offering, all of this was just revealing that the people had no longer trusted in God. We fast forward today and we can still see these things happening in our own spiritual climate. Is there a Malachi amongst us? A messenger whose voice is found trustworthy, an honorable person, deeply devoted to God. In a time of Malachi, we see the temple was being rebuilt, almost like the moment we are in where God is rebuilding, so to speak, the temple spiritually. Ezra the scribe had now reintroduced God's law, his word, sort of like this moment of quarantine where God is pretty much reintroducing himself to us. The people have become discouraged because those amazing prophecy, you know, the great awakening and, and this revival that had been promised have not come to pass and the Lord had not come to the temple and visited us and their enemies had not been removed and God's people were not being honored amongst a nation. I think about America today, this very moment, we don't know what was the real agenda with this whole COVID. We know that the true enemy has not been fully removed. And there has been many moments in the midst of all this darkness that we as Christians are not being honored because the nations are asking, where is your God? Just like in the time of Malachi, the people were expecting for something to happen right away, just like we expected 2020 to, 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 to awaken us right away. And in that time, it was longer than what they had expected. They had become spiritually careless and turned back to their ungodly behavior. And even now we can feel the spiritual laziness and dullness filling the hearts and, and the attitudes of God's people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Huh. Few in Malachi's time took God's word seriously. That few is what we still call today a remnant. The very few that was found in the upper room on the day of Pentecost. Malachi chapter 4 verse 1 to 3 begins to give a reference of the first and the second coming of Christ, which God himself has fixed both days. The prophet speaks about a day that is coming where the proud, the wicked, who have denied Jesus Christ will be judged and will not find no place for themselves in the kingdom of God. But for those who fear the name of the Lord will have Christ's rejoicing light because they were found faithful. 
for both the first and the second coming of Christ brings a spiritual salvation of freedom for all who love and serve him. Because through Jesus, we are justified and sanctified to see his light, to be his light. Christ's glory will shine like the rising sun, like a ring of light of salvation, blessings and goodness and healing to his people. Christ gave us the Holy Spirit for those who are his, to shine in their hearts and to be the comforter to them, but as well to all those around us. I read something which I thought I was reading what I actually read, but when I looked at it again, I was actually getting a message that wasn't really what was written. And what my eyes projected was this message. All is right with those who are in the light with God. Christ came as a son to bring not only, not only did he come, but for our salvation, he came to be the light to a dark world. He came to bring healing to a distempered world. Our souls, our souls are to increase in the knowledge of Christ in spiritual strength. We are not like a flower that withers, but like what Malachi refers to, a young cow that grows up to be strong and solid. If there was ever a time to be mature, it needs to be now, for the nation is desperately in need of healing. And when I say nations, I'm speaking of people. And as children of his light, we hold the key to bring healing to them. Isaiah 50, 53, 5. It's a common scripture people use when we have someone who is sick. But he, as pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our inequities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And his wounds, we were healed. One of my other favorite scriptures is Psalms 147.3. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. This last one, the most powerful one, and why do I say it's powerful is because it gets straight to the point. <laughs> Luke chapter 9 verse 2, he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. So I guess I say all of this to come down to this. Where are the messengers that carry healing in our midst? If we are found in him, then we are the messengers that carry his healing people can actually be healed through us a nation can actually receive their healing through us proverbs chapter 4 verse 22 says for they are life to those who find them and healing to all their flesh are you that life that person that someone can find healing in are your words bringing healing into a person's soul that can help them get closer to god what we are seeing around us is a manifestation of the hearts of man. So, do we see healing? I invite you today to consider becoming a messenger of healing to a broken nation. If you're already doing so, then disciple someone else to do so. Let's do what the word says. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 11, it says to encourage and build one another up in ways of the Holy Spirit by becoming Isaiah 58. A person who actually repairs the broken walls and becomes the restorer of the streets. Will you be the messenger of healing today? I encourage you to seek out the Lord with all your heart so that you can provide healing for our nation. <laughs> Ta-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-